Dear friends, today I am with Ron Williams. He's a pastor and evangelist with an amazing story. I want to hear you this. Not long ago, he was preparing his funeral. Ron, tell me, why in the world were you preparing your funeral? Well, I was diagnosed with stage four kidney cancer. Oh, wow, that's advanced. Yes, and um, the CT scan showed that I had a cyst on my kidneys, 13 to 16 centimeters. Wow. And it was located in the back of my stomach, right on a main vein, blood vein. And if the doctor would have went in there, either I would have been crippled for the rest of my life or immediately dead. Wow. So I um, <clears throat> went to Cancer Treatment Center of America. Mm -hmm. And uh, they wanted to, <clears throat> for me to try this chemotherapy that would shrink it enough where the doctors can go in and take it out. So I decided to try it. Uh, he said there would be four doses uh, for me to uh, put in my vein through my body and to see whether or not that this medicine would work. Well, the first two doses, I was fine. The third dose, I felt myself diuretic. In other words, I wow. was having diarrhea, and I was going to the bathroom 13 times a day. Oh, man. Every time I would use it and get up and go in the bedroom, five minutes later, I had to go right back 13 times a day. Then it got to a point where it attacked my colon and gave me colitis, whereas I couldn't hold my bowels any longer. I would mm. literally go to the bathroom on myself. Yeah. So the doctors recommended me to wear pampers. And as a man that is very humiliated, as a mm. man, you know, can't hold your bowels and you end up you know, using the bathroom on yourself, that is very, very embarrassing. So I went back to the doctor, told the doctor, I wasn't gonna take the medicine no more. Mm -hmm. And he cautioned me, Mr. Williams, if you don't take the medicine, the cancer can move from this area to somewhere else, and we might not be able to save you. Well, that's the chance that I took. So I began to um, make things right with my fellow man. Uh, any person that I felt that I uh, hurt, I asked for forgiveness. I'm ready to die now. Wow. I believe that it's not how you go down, it's how you come up. Mm. You can go down blind, crippled, or crazy. You can go down with cancer, high blood pressure. It's not, it doesn't matter how you go down, it matters how you come up. Yeah. So I decided to make things right with my fellow man, and try to make things right with God. So I told my wife that uh, I wasn't gonna take the medicine no more. Of course, she was emotional. So we flew to Texas. I went there to prepare my funeral. Um, I had the preacher who was gonna do the eulogy. I had persons that was gonna do the Old and New Testament. I even had someone gonna do a solo. And uh, we was all emotional because Actually, they just saw me dying. So how many days you had left by that time, according to the doctors or whatever? Six months to live. Six months. And uh, so uh, they said six months I could be I could be dead mm. uh, if I didn't take the medicine. The chemo. The, the chemotherapy. Chemo. The chemo. Okay. And so uh, I went to Texas to prepare my funeral. So as I traveled, as we traveled back to uh, uh, Georgia. I was listening to a preacher, and there was a representative from New Japan institution that we are in right now. And he was telling us about the treatment plans and the treatment here at New Japan. And he was promoting that this was a ministry that helped individuals with chronic cases like mine holistically and natural. So that mm. kind of draw my attention. I said, let me check out this Yuji Pine. So I Googled Yuji Pine and I talked to one of the nurse intakes. 
And I told her my situation. She said, well, what kind of sickness do you have? I said, well, I have. I've been diagnosed with uh, stage four kidney cancer. I said, can you help me? She said, yes, Pastor Wills, we can help you. I said, well, how are you going to help me? She said, we're going to burn it out of you. <laughs> <laughs> And we just laugh. We laugh about 10 minutes because I never heard nothing like that before. She said, we're going to burn it out of you. I said, well, how are you going to do that? She said, we have a lot of hot treatments, natural hot, cold treatments here, mm. and we're going to burn it out of you. And uh, what impressed me about this ministry was the fact that uh, before, we got, before we got off the line, the nurse prayed for me mm. and that if it was God's will for me to be here and... Um, if it's God's will for me to be here, he will make a way. And if he made a way for me to come here, he will heal me. And I'm going to tell you, before I got here, I asked God. I said, Lord, meet me here. This is a spiritual place. This is a place where you can get close to God. And not only you can get close to God, but you can be healed naturally. Mm. Now, Pastor, before before having that plan of maybe coming here and having all this experience with cancer and not healing, how was your relationship with God? Well, to be honest with you, sir, my, re my relationship with God was failing. Mm -hmm. um, I was mad with God. Um, out of all of my family, um, I'm the youngest of four. And... Um, I'm the preacher of the family, and I just thought it was unfair for me to receive such devastating news, uh, whereas I was preaching and telling people how God is a healer. God can set you free. God can do anything but fail. All this powerful sermon, powerful messages. People are moved by the Spirit of God. People are blessed and here I am come with cancer. Mm -hmm. It was devastating for me. And I felt my spirituality drifting. Drifting from God. I did no longer have a desire to pray. I didn't want to read my Bible. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to, actually, I didn't want to say nothing to God. And one day I was, it hit me all of a sudden that I'm going to die. And I fell down on my knees. And God gave me an opportunity to vent. Like a child is saying something to his father or, or complaining to his father or saying Dad, you're not fair. Mm. I was telling God, you're not fair. Why you give me this cancer? Why you don't love me? Mm. What have I done? And for three hours, I was in the presence of God. And I was telling him how much I was upset with him. And I want you to know that when I got through crying, now I know what it's like when Jesus told Peter that you will deny me mm. twice before the cock crow. And the Bible said that Peter left and he wept bitterly. Mm. And that was my case. I wept bitterly because I was going to die. Mm. And soon as I finished weeping and God listening to my cry, I cut on this program and there was a gentleman, a representative from New Japan, this ministry, was telling us that New Japan is a place that if you want natural healing, this is the place. And God directed me to call this place. And when I did, God met me here. Amen. Tell us your experience when you came here then. When I walked in these doors, I felt the presence 
of God on these grounds. Praise the Lord. I understand, sir, when Moses, God told Moses, take off your shoes and which these ground you're standing on is holy ground. This place is holy. Amen. The staff is holy. The, what I love about it, sir, is that before any one of these medical missionaries gave you your treatment for that day, they prayed for you. Their dress was modest as becoming holiness. Their countenance expressed the love of God. The food testified, testifies that there's a God who deals with health and fruits and vegetables and <laughs> nuts. What? <laughs> <laughs> I walked in the kitchen and looked like the God of Eden. <laughs> very Thanks, very beautiful, very tasteful. And as a result, I'm 62 years old. Amen. God cut. All of that excess weight, I was 240 pounds. Wow. God cut all that excessive weight. My mind is clear. My directions is clear. I'm healed. I have victory. I have power. Lord, have mercy, Jesus. It is always good to follow the plan of Jesus. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Friends, Ron, today is cancer free cancer free <laughs> can you believe that that's awesome and why i want to show you this interview because ron well as he said he met god god healed him here because this ministry existed because one day long ago god put it in the mind of someone to start this ministry that today has grown maybe god is calling you to start a ministry and you have no idea the impact uh, that that ministry will have in the life of many in the future, just like Ron had today. And may, the founder of UT Pines, I don't know, maybe he's dead right now, but he passed away maybe long, long ago, but he has no idea of the long-term impact of how many people have been blessed because God started this ministry with whoever founded it that I don't remember. Sorry about that. So, Pastor... Tell me, what would you tell them if, they, if, they're, if God is calling them to do something? As a result of this ministry, God called me into the ministry of reconciliation. Amen. The ministry of forgiveness. So now I know what it's like to be forgiven. Mm. Maybe this may not be your experience. Maybe God is calling you to a ministry and God calls us to a ministry of ministries that he have delivered us from. Maybe he delivered you from smoking. Maybe he delivered you from drinking. Maybe he delivered you from food, uh, 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 gluttony. Whatever God delivered you from is the ministry that he's calling you into to share with others, to let them see that God is still in the miracle business. Amen. Friends, if you want to learn more about Lifestyle Centers, or maybe you want to locate a Lifestyle Center near you, visit our webpage, outpostcenters.org slash health. Links are going to be in the description below. Also, if you want to start a ministry, or maybe you have one and you want to grow it more, OCI, we're all about helping ministries thrive. All of that also links in the description below. Ron, thank you so much thank for this you interview. For May God bless your life. And man, cancer free. Cancer there we go. Free. Praise the Lord. <laughs> thank you, Lord, for giving us this beautiful message of health evangelism, medical missionaries, and eight natural remedies. And friends, thanks for watching. See you on the next one.